Well, it's so complicated. I mean, justice for me, I mean, one of the reasons I love Shakespeare is that justice, you know, I could say back to you at that level of abstraction, well, justice is about fundamental fairness. Justice is about equality, you know, among people who uh, are similarly situated. Justice is about due process of law. But I think precisely why I'm driven to Shakespeare is because I don't think the conversation really helps anybody at that level of generality. So we really need to think about particular stories and particular case studies and particular mythologies. And one of the regrets that I have about uh, the otherwise wonderful nature of, the, of American diversity is that <clears throat> our heterogeneity means that we have very few common mythologies left to us. So what I'm trying to do in Shakespeare is to try and say, in the same way that I would say to a, a law school class about a case, but I want to make this more available to people who haven't gone to law school and don't want to go to law school. You know, let's read the merch, read the Merchant of Venice to me with, together with me against measure for measure. You know, and the Merchant of Venice is really about a uh, law that uh, a society that takes law too seriously, like takes the letter of the law too seriously, which is to say. <clears throat> Shylock says, I want my pound of flesh, you know, and the court of Venice is open to all comers. It's a cosmopolitan society. It's a mercantile society. So it interprets that contract really strictly. And in fact, this is in the play, which is to say, because this is a market open to all comers, people would lose faith in the law if we didn't interpret all contracts really strictly. And so therefore, Shylock is entitled to Antonio's pound of flesh. And nobody wants to live in that society, right? On the other hand, it can't be that when Portia says, the quality of mercy is not strained, a drop is a gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath, and she has this great encomium to mercy, that mercy is what it's all about, and that all we need as an answer to this is to be merciful to each other. Because what real mercy would mean would really be something that would strike at the very heart of law, and that's measure for measure. The Duke at the beginning of measure for measure, just so people know, since this is a less familiar play, he's the Duke of Vienna, he has let the law fall into utter disrepair, so he just hasn't enforced the law. And so lawlessness is sweeping the land, and my favorite line is, the baby beats a nurse. Like, this is a world out of joint, you know, hierarchy has been disrupted. And so he essentially leaves, and leaves a, re leaves a really strict uh, deputy in his place to enforce the law, but the deputy himself ends up violating the law, and then the duke comes in and restores order. But at the very end, the Duke like issues all these pardons to everybody who's broken the law all over again. So at the end of the play, we're no better off than we were at the beginning. So both the merchant and Measure for Measure describe worlds to us in which neither of us would want to live, that no, no one would want to live in. Because you know, the Merchant Venice doesn't have enough mercy. Measure for Measure has too much mercy and no law. So what is the answer to that? I don't think that there's any easy answer that says, you know, I'm going to titrate, you know, mercy and, and the letter of the law in such a way that we're going to have the perfect balance and it's like a, you know, two to one ratio of letter of the law to mercy. Like, that's never going to be the case. It's going to actually, actually be on the ground and with context. But I think that looking at our common mythologies is going to help us understand that. And the reason that we have these stories is so that we understand that as Justice uh, uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes once said, you know, the life of the law is not logic, it's experience. And it's experience of these stories. It's a fine-grained, everyday, you know, muddy, murky you know, uh, uh, nature of, of life itself that we somehow have to make sense of. And the answer is not going to be, well, we should have the strict letter of the law, or we should have you know, overflowing mercy, because neither of those is going to end up in a society in which we want to live. But in trying to find that middle space, we're not going to be able to do that through any kind of scientific formula. It's not an algorithm. It's not algebra. We're going to actually have to talk about culture. And that's what I'm trying to do in this book.